Proton has finally released their long-awaited Drive app for Windows with a Mac app, hopefully soon to follow closely in beta. In this video, I'm gonna share my initial thoughts. This is probably gonna be a shorter video. I'm gonna try to keep it shorter, but we'll see how it turns out. I do have a couple of ranty sections toward the beginning, so if you don't care about any of those and you just wanna skip straight to the initial thoughts and the footage and all that kind of stuff, skip to the timestamp somewhere on screen now. And of course, I cannot do a video without a support segment and slash disclaimer in this case, we do have a Proton affiliate link. Is this an actual payment from Proton? No, we have not communicated with them in any way, shape or form about this video. Do we get a little bit of money if you click on that link and then get a paid plan? Yes, we do. Would we like you to use that link should you decide to check out Proton for the first time? Yes, we would. Are we gonna be mad at you if you don't use that link? Absolutely, I'm kidding. We know that everybody's needs are different and everybody's preferences are different. Even if you have nothing against Proton, it may not be the email provider or VPN or cloud or calendar or password manager that you wanna use. But if you watch this video and you think, hmm, maybe I'm interested, I'm gonna go ahead and check this out. You can go ahead and use that link if you wanna support us. And again, if you don't, no hard feelings. I get it, we're all privacy people. Some people are just kinda of squigged out by affiliate links. I totally understand. Okay, so for those just joining us, what is Proton? Who is Proton? Proton is a company based out of Switzerland that makes privacy-focused products. They are most well-known for their encrypted email and VPN, both of which I use and quite like, to be totally honest with you. They're now offering encrypted calendars. Technically, they have encrypted contacts within the app, but I don't really count that. They've started offering a drive service, and most recently, they even released a password manager. Basically, they're trying to be a privacy-focused suite to compete with mainstream options like Google or iCloud or things like that. Also, about a year or two ago, they acquired Simple Login. It was an acquisition. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to call it, but they acquired Simple Login and that is now integrated into their workflow. So now they offer email aliasing, which is pretty dope. I like Simple Login. I used it even before the acquisition. I still use it. I like it. Now, just to be clear, Proton is not a perfect company. So far, I haven't found one that is. Not all claims are made equal. To put it quite frankly, a lot of the claims against Proton are bullshit made up by YouTubers to click links or people who just have some kind of weird obsessive grudge against them. That said, some of them are legitimate. One of my recent complaints is they're really starting to get a little bit carried away in the marketing and make some really exaggerating claims that even by marketing standards are a little bit cringy. That said, at this time, at the time of recording this video, Proton hasn't done anything egregious that makes me not want to recommend them. They do have their flaws, but overall, I like them. They make a really good product. It's very clean, it's very polished. For the most part, it's relatively bug-free. Maybe not always on launch, but they get there eventually. And you know, look, I'm not a fan of putting all your eggs in one basket. As much as I like Proton, I don't use them for everything. I use their email, I sometimes use the calendar, and I sometimes use the VPN. But that said, a lot of mainstream, quote unquote, normie users do want that all in one ecosystem. That's why people use things like Google Calendar along with Google Drive, along with Google Search, along with Gmail. Or that's why a lot of Apple users are really into like the iCloud email with Apple Calendar, with iCloud storage. People like it when they have something that just works. For example, when you get a Gmail that says, hey, let's get lunch at you know 3 p.m. next Tuesday, it's really easy to just click that button and throw it on your calendar and now it's on your phone and it's just everywhere. It's super easy and convenient. And most people like that level of convenience. This is Proton's target audience, okay? They're not trying to reach the hardcore people that compile their own Linux kernel and self-host their email and all this kind of stuff. And we'll talk about that a little later. They're trying to reach the people who are still neck deep in the Google ecosystem or the Apple ecosystem, and they're trying to offer them a better alternative. I could make a whole video about Proton's shortcomings, especially at launch, but luckily I don't have to. TechLore already did. So if you're new to Proton and you want a more accurate explanation of what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses and what are they going for, I highly recommend that video because he pretty much nailed it and did a really good job. Now on that note, let me take a moment because I know I'm gonna get that one person in the comments and let's talk about why anyone would release a privacy app for Windows. Windows sucks. Okay, I'm not gonna argue you guys with that. It sucks from a user interface perspective. It sucks from the fact that it's always crashing. I don't understand how my Cube's laptop from 2012 is more stable than my Windows 11 computer that is not even a year old, but somehow it is. Windows is terrible, and that's not even including on the privacy side. If we're gonna compare the three-ish 
desktop options out there, which you know are Windows, Mac, and Linux, not in that particular order. Windows is the loser. I mean, let's be real here. And look, let's be fair. Windows 11 has made some good security improvements. I strongly disagree with all the haters out there who say it's just Windows 10 with cosmetic changes. They have legitimately done some things behind the scene to beef up their security. That said, this is kind of a new focus for Microsoft. They are still way behind Mac and have a lot of catching up to do. So by virtually any metric, Windows is the loser. And I'm going to acknowledge that up front. I, I'm not going to argue that. That said, there are legitimate reasons that people might still be using Windows. For example, as an audio guy, I can get a Windows computer that does audio just fine for less than half the cost of a Mac that's equivalent. And when I say just fine, I don't mean like, yeah, I guess it's good enough. I mean like it's snappy, it's responsive, it's not lagging, it runs all the programs, it has plenty of storage, it works great. Might be a little bit better on a Mac, but you know what? I'm not gonna pay twice as much to get a 10% better experience. That's just doesn't make economical sense. There's also the financial aspect. Maybe somebody has a reason they need to use Windows. Like again, being an audio guy, and they wanna have a separate device for Linux. Or maybe they wanna get a bigger hard drive so that they can dual boot. Maybe it's a work computer and they use it occasionally, not all the time because you really shouldn't mix work and personal, but that's the only device they have as far as desktops go, so they're not allowed to like flash Linux on it. Maybe it's also just personal preference. You know, a lot of people don't like the Mac walled garden and they don't like the fact that Macs can't be taken apart and repaired or reconfigured. Finally, there is the fact that everybody is at a different place in their privacy journey. It's possible that somebody is new to this stuff, they're just dipping their toes in, and they're just not ready to jump into a new operating system. You gotta remember, if you're somebody who's been using Windows for 10, 20, 30 years, I mean, these things are habits, they're familiar, and it's scary. Change is scary. Now look, just to be crystal clear, I am not defending Windows. Windows is a garbage operating system, I hate it, all of us should strive to use it as little as possible. What I am defending is Windows developers and privacy tools like Proton Drive. Just because someone is on Windows for any reason doesn't mean that they are less deserving of privacy. Remember, around here, we believe privacy is a human right, which means it applies to everyone, regardless of whether they use Windows or put pineapple on their pizza or you know whatever the case may be. Privacy is for everyone. So just for those of you in the comments who I know are gonna be like, well, why would they even bother? Windows can't be made private. You're right, but this could be one step that makes it easier for someone to make that transition to a more private lifestyle, which down the road could result in leaving Windows eventually. Okay, with all of that rambling out of the way, what are my initial thoughts about Proton Drive? I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the post, it was a workday morning for me, and so I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get home from work and test this out. And I'm not even a Proton Drive user, to be honest, but I immediately recognized that, like I've said, this is gonna make a tool more accessible to the average user. and. Honestly, I was right. I think Proton Drive looks really good. It is sleek, it is modern, it is good looking, it is intuitive, it's very simple and easy. And these are all things that mainstream users want out of an app like that. Now, if you already have an encrypted storage app that you are happy with and you trust, I don't think you necessarily need to switch. I don't think that Proton Drive is some revolutionary thing in and of itself. And even this app doesn't really offer any like particularly amazing features that Mega or Filin or Sync or any of these other apps offer. It's just if you are already a Proton user and you haven't found a cloud storage app that you like or you want to use Proton Drive, now you can. And in that sense, I think this is a game changer. Now, there is already a Proton app available for iOS and Android. But prior to that, and up until now on desktop, in the past, if you wanted to upload a file, there has been an unspoken limit, both on number of files and size of files. And that's not because of Proton, that's because of the browser. So that's always been kind of an obstacle, even for those who are willing to just log in and upload directly through the web portal. Well, now thanks to this app, that's not the case anymore. Thanks to an app like this, you can upload thousands of files or large files with no issues whatsoever. Now, I mentioned it was super easy and that goes from start to finish. The download is exactly what you would expect. You go to the website, you download it, you install it, boom. Once it's up and running, you pick the folder that you wanna sync or you create a folder or you even just pull stuff that's already in there and it starts the syncing process. For my testing purposes, I went ahead and used the files for the New Oils website because I sync those a lot and it's pretty big and it's also open source so it's not like there's anything secret in there for the video. Once you've got it up and running, it works exactly like Google Drive or Dropbox or any of those other app-based file programs. It creates a little file on your computer and you can work directly out of it in real time, which personally I like. I like to have cloud backups of things just because I don't really trust my devices these days. They tend to die at the most inconvenient times. And it's nice to know that if that happens, I don't have to dig in and recover things, which I can do. It's just kind of a pain. It'd be nice to buy a new device, 
Install the app, sign in, and boom, everything's right there. It's super convenient. I've been doing that for years. That's just how I like to roll. Now, one thing I didn't notice at first, but someone pointed out is kind of weird and kind of annoying, is every device you download creates its own folder, which means that in theory, this makes cross-device sync pretty difficult, if not entirely impossible. I mean, if every device has their own folder, how am I supposed to synchronize between multiple devices? I can't select those folders. You know what I mean? It's just... It's, it's great as a backup solution, but it's not great if I'm trying to synchronize between devices like how I do with my website. Hopefully this is something Proton will figure out soon or something that I am just not understanding correctly and is user error on my end. Now, as far as that initial synchronization, in my opinion, it was a little slow. Like I said, I used the website files for testing. And one of the reasons I did that is because I actually sync those a lot. So I make changes to the website on Linux, which then sync to Nextcloud, which then sync to Windows. And then on Windows, I actually upload the files because it's a lot faster. Now, recently I had to rebuild that VM. So I know how long it takes for this synchronization to happen. Using the Nextcloud app, it only took about, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 minutes. It, it was relatively quick. I, I mean, it's a lot of files, but it's a lot of small files. I don't have a lot of videos or anything like that. So I kind of expected it would be quick and it was. With the Proton Drive app, that was not the case. This thing took literal hours to upload. And I don't know exactly how long because around the one hour mark, I just gave up and went and took a shower. It was a Friday night, it was after work. I was just like, I, I gotta move on, man. I, so I just came back later. But I know it hit at least one hour. I think it said it took like two and a half. It took a really long time. However, I suspect that once that initial synchronization is over, it's probably a lot faster and I haven't really noticed any issues since then. Now, I was disappointed to see that there was no multi-account support, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, that's probably a really niche case. I mean, that might be something they introduce in the future. I could totally see that. But I also recognize that for the average person, they're not gonna need multiple accounts. Okay, I think I'm gonna end this video on one more legitimate complaint, and that is the lack of Linux support, which unfortunately is kind of a common theme from Proton. We've seen this a lot with like their VPN app, which I'm told is notoriously abysmal on Linux. And basically Proton has said, yeah, we'll get around to a Linux drive app someday at some point, whenever we feel like it, I don't know, maybe we'll see what happens. And that's really unfortunate because I mentioned at the top of the video, there might be Windows users or Mac users who do wanna make that switch to Linux someday. And if this app is not available on Linux, that's a hurdle. That's one more thing slowing them down. It's really important that we try not to put roadblocks like that in the way of people who want to improve their privacy. I don't consider myself like a paragon of how to do things, but look at the new oil, for example. We do have a YouTube channel and we do have advice on how to harden Windows and Mac, but we also have recommendations for Linux distros and resources like the Linux experiment for people who wanna learn more about Linux. And we mirror our content to PeerTube for people who want to get off YouTube. So it's like that, like they need to think ahead for like, okay, how can we help people who want to get off of Windows or Mac? Okay, so all that said, my initial impressions with Proton Drive are I'm really happy with it. I think it's an awesome step in the right direction. It looks really, really clean. And like I said, it's one more option for Windows users, hopefully soon Mac users. And it just gets one step closer to making Proton a more fully featured experience, like a, a more fully integrated ecosystem that people can use easily. Yeah, I really like it. So I wanna reiterate, if you haven't found a cloud service you like, and you're willing to use Proton or you already are a Proton user, I think this is definitely worth your time. If you've already found an encrypted cloud that you're happy with, awesome. Stay there, no need to switch. In fact, let's do that fun little YouTube thing. Tell me in the comments what your cloud is, why you're sticking with it, or if you are gonna check out Proton, what's the big draw? You know, Are you just a Proton user who's happy to see it, you wanna check it out, or is there something specific you're interested in? Let me know, why not? I like reading comments from you guys. I also wanna remind you guys that if you do go that route, again, we have that affiliate link. If you you don't have to use it if you don't want to, I get it, no hard feelings, but if you do end up getting a paid plan, that gives us a little bit of money in return, helps keep us going. It's a great way to support us at no extra cost to yourself, and it is appreciated. So thank you guys for checking out this video, and I will see you in the next one.